Hello everybody, this is Robert Lomax here from RSL Educational. Saba, who runs this group, has invited me to organise a writing competition exclusive to the members here. In this video, I'm going to be introducing a short creative writing task. When you're ready to have a go, download the answer sheet linked in the video description just above. Write your answer, and then perhaps write a second draft, then photograph or scan it and post it in the comments below. Once the entries are in, I'm going to post another video in which I show off some of the best entries and announce the winners. Entries must be submitted by midnight on Wednesday the 18th of November. That's the absolute deadline. The three best entries, as judged by me, will all receive free copies of my brand new RSL Creative Writing Books 1 and 2. So the winners receive a copy of both books. I'll be looking for powerful, creative work that responds really well to the instructions. I'll be thinking about the quality of the English as well, although this isn't primarily a spelling competition. It's fine to use a dictionary to check your work. I'd encourage children to write a first draft, check it, make corrections, and then write a neat version and submit that. Uh, so here are a few very serious rules. Um, Entry should be a child's own work no cheating. Entries mustn't be any longer than the answer space I provide. Uh, and in fact, ideally, please write them in the answer space. Don't type them up um, or write them on separate line paper. Uh, if you have to do that, okay, but um, I'd much rather you submitted them on the, on the answer space provided. Um, only entries posted as photos or scans in the comments under this video will be accepted. Please don't email entries to me, don't send them to me by Facebook Messenger, they won't be considered. If you want your entry to be considered, post it in the comments under this video. Uh, entries have to be submitted by midnight on Wednesday the 18th of November. That's it. Anything submitted after that won't be considered. Um, Finally, if you're one of the winners and you happen to live outside the United Kingdom, um, I'm going to ask you to pay for postage to send the books to you. If you live in the United Kingdom, the prize books, if you win, will be posted to you for free. Um, oh, and the final thing is, uh, if for whatever reason I don't think there are three entries all deserving the prizes, then I reserve the right not to issue, not to issue prize, prizes to three people. But I think that's quite unlikely. Uh, if you'd like to buy copies of the books, by the way, they're available on Amazon and I've put some links in the video description just above. Now I'm going to take you through the task and discuss one example answer to give you a really clear idea of what sort of thing works well. So this is all taken from RSL Creative Writing Book 1, which is the blue book on the left of your screen. So let's scroll through to look at the part that I want to discuss here. Um, so this is the task and this is also available um, to download in the information above this video. Um, so this is about creating a short piece of description, not a full length story, that's really effective. Uh, so what does it mean when I talk about being effective? This means that you've got to take your reader with you into the place and into the character that you're describing. So for the time that it takes somebody to read your work, probably just a few minutes, they should be able to imagine that they are there and actually share many of the experiences of the character that you're talking about. Uh, and here you've got a photograph. This image shows a desert scene, far from anywhere, with a solitary boy riding a camel. It's just before sunset, and a sandstorm is beginning. And here's the question that you need to respond to. And when you're writing for the competition, make sure that you respond to this question really precisely, um, because winning entries will need to do all these things exactly. Imagine that you're the boy in this photograph. Describe the scene and convey some of your thoughts and emotions using the present tense. Your work should fit within the writing space provided. Okay, so simple as that. And here I've provided a list of useful hints and I'm just going to talk through that quickly um, because you might not have a clear idea of what to do and this will help you to do some good things and help you to avoid doing some bad things. Uh, first thing is read the instructions carefully. Um, you need to talk about I, you're writing in the first person, you're writing as the boy in the, in the photo. Uh, you need to use the present tense, so nothing about I was doing this, I was doing that. Um, and you need to talk about thoughts and emotions. Um, second thing I've written here, everybody's personality is different. Uh, think carefully about who this particular person is, as I've written here. 
Um, is he determined? Is he cautious? Is he prone to worry? Does he love his camel? Is he annoyed by his camel? Think about these things and get an idea of who this person is, and don't just assume that they're a version of you. Uh, there shouldn't be too much plot. We're not talking about a full-length story, and in fact, even in a story of a page or two, the most common mistake that people make is to include far too much plot. Having said that, think about just a little bit of narrative development to give you some structure. As I've suggested in the, on the page here, does the sandstorm get stronger? Does the boy struggle up the side of a dune? Does the camel get excited and then the boy manages to bring it back under control? Um, as I've said, if you can come up with one simple idea of this sort, it will make your task easier and much more enjoyable. Um, of course, the most original and creative answers are likely to be ones that come up with an idea that I haven't suggested here. Um, if you can come up with something different that works really well, that's going to help your work to stand out. Uh, your job is to describe this scene. Don't waste time giving lots of backstory. Bring the scene to life with sensory images. Um, so think about the five senses, smell, sight, taste, touch and hearing. Um, and here's a really useful tip that you may have heard me discuss before. Um, when you're looking for a way to describe something, often the best thing you can do is to think what the most obvious sense would be and then choose a different one to describe it. Uh, there's a whole chapter on doing that really effectively in this book if you decide to go ahead and buy it. Okay, over the page. Um, circle things in the photograph, look for really interesting details that might not be the most obvious things and think about how you can work them into your writing. When you're writing, changes focus, start a new paragraph. So answers that just give one massive block paragraph are going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to winning this competition. Think through your sentences carefully before you write them. That's important advice for any kind of writing that you might do. Check your work carefully, and I'd add to that, perhaps write a second draft. Um, okay, let's push on. Um, the most important things here, focus on the picture, do exactly what the question asks, and be as descriptive as possible. Right, and then there is the answer space. And as I say, if you've printed out the answer space, you'll already have this in front of you. And you could even print it out twice, so you have a chance to produce a second draft in the same space. Um, and I've just written the question out again here. Right, okay. Now I'm going to take you through um, an example answer. And um, here are some things for you to think about. What has the example answer, uh, written by an imaginary person called Katie, uh, what's Katie done that you could have done, that you could do too, that you could bring into your story? Um, what ideas do you have that might even have made Katie's version better? Um, I've written here, can you circle the mistakes? That isn't going to be relevant because you don't have this printed out unless you own the book already. And how might you improve the answer that's here? So here's Katie's answer on the left here. Um, and I'm going to pull that up in a window of its own so it's easy for you to look at and read through. So the example story in the left-hand screen is not supposed to be a perfect example. There are things wrong with it, and there are things which are good but could be better, there are things that are a bit mediocre, and there are outright mistakes. Um, so this would be a really good point to pause this video, take a time to read it yourself, and try to work out what you would do better, and what you like. Now, Let's go through each paragraph separately with my opinions on it. So the first paragraph um, is given here. I am bending down to tighten my camel's harness when the first gust of sand slaps my cheek. I look up and suddenly the dunes are heaving like water. The camel lowers her head and walks on, the sand whipping her legs, sometimes faster and sometimes more slowly. I feel proud of her, but also afraid. The desert is on the move. Will I lose my way? So Katie gets straight into the action here, which is usually a good choice. And there's a powerful sensory image, sand slaps my cheek, in the very first sentence. There are some great verbs, words for actions as well, such as slaps, heaving and whipping. These are good choices because they help the reader to imagine exactly what is going on. 
Katie's doing everything that the question asks for in this paragraph, including referring to the character's thoughts and emotions. The first sentence contains two mistakes with apostrophes. The harness belongs to one camel, this one, so the apostrophe should come after the word camel, giving us camels. You would say camels with an apostrophe after the S, uh, like Katie said, if several camels, camels all had harnesses. So you said the three camels harnesses. Slaps, meanwhile, is a verb, not a noun, and it doesn't possess anything. Therefore, it shouldn't have an apostrophe. This camel is the protagonist's only companion in this scene. Protagonist means main character, and it's very important to him. This might be brought out better by giving her a name. This would also save you from having to repeat the word camel so often. Katie's second sentence is short and direct, and almost excellent. However, the simile, like water, isn't as clear as it might be. Sometimes water heaves, but more often it just sits there. I'm talking about when she says, and suddenly the dunes are heaving like water. If you want to suggest that the sand dunes seem to surge and shift all around, it's no good if your, water, if your reader sees the phrase, like water, and imagines a muddy puddle. Like a restless ocean, for example, would create a much clearer and more dramatic image in your reader's mind. Um, there's a box here that reminds you what a simile is. I'll skip that because you can pause this and have a look if you want to. Uh, the next sentence needs a fair bit of rejigging. Does the camel walk on the sand or does she walk on the sand whipping her legs? We need a comma to make clear that it's the second option. See, the comma here actually fundamentally changes the meaning. Uh, and I talk in the box that follows about the importance of reading sentences out loud, listening to where you naturally pause. Where you pause briefly, like this, it's likely that you need a comma. Where there's a longer pause, you'll probably need another form of punctuation, perhaps a full stop, question mark, colon, dash, or semicolon. Um, and I've suggested that you try reading my previous paragraph, where there's a longer pause, and so on, out loud. Compare how long you pause for different kinds of punctuation mark. Where do you take breaths when you're reading this out loud? And this is something that can be very tricky, uh, but I'm planning, probably in um, RSL Creative Writing Book 4 or 5, to include a section specifically about learning how to punctuate correctly. Um, where am I up to here? Yep, okay. Um, the verb walks is absolutely fine, but it isn't very interesting. Um, lowers her head and walks on, the sand whipping her legs. Katie should consider whether another verb might be more powerful. In this case, the camel is pushing on through horrible conditions and probably not enjoying the experience. Strides or trudges would convey its mood a bit better. Meanwhile, does the phrase sometimes faster and sometimes more slowly refer to the camel or to the sand? If it's the sand, Katie could convey the same idea with the word surge, the violently surging sand. Or, to avoid too many ing words, whipping her legs in violent surges. As you can see, there's more than one possibility when you're editing. In fact, there are infinite possibilities. Um, and I've said in this box, if you can find a less wordy way to convey an idea, this will usually make your writing much more pleasant to read, as well as easier to understand. Uh, Katie's last three sentences are simple but effective. However, watch out that dessert is on the move, with two S's, seems to be referring to a wobbly jelly or a trifle or something like that, when Katie meant to use the word desert with one S. Um, the missing comma in the phrase walks on the sand, which should be walks on the sand, and the incorrect spelling of desert, sorry, desert, are both examples of how English mistakes can actually change the meaning of your writing. Spelling and grammar aren't just for show, they really matter. So here's the paragraph again with all the corrections and improvements that I've suggested. I'm bending down to tighten Anya's harness 
when the first gust of sand slaps my cheek. I look up, and suddenly the dunes are heaving like a restless ocean. The camel lowers her head and strides on, the sand whipping her legs in violent surges. I feel proud of her, but also afraid. The desert is on the move. Will I lose my way? So there you can see all the changes that I've been discussing so far. Here's the next paragraph from Katie's original answer. I can still see the sun through a gap in the clouds, but the gap is closing. The evening light is red. I think of my sisters back home. Sandstorms are dangerous. Will I see them again? There are some splendid ideas in here, but they could be expressed better. The first sentence contains a powerful image, but it's quite wordy and repeats the word gap. Clouds are tightening around the sun would be much more direct and would add to the emotion of the passage by subtly implying that the sun, like the protagonist, is feeling trapped. We're building an idea here which creates a certain emotion. Red in the second sentence could be a lot more specific as well as more beautiful. What kind of red would the evening light be? The sandstorm would block out some of the light and probably tint it with orange. These two ideas could be conveyed by the phrase dull and rusty, for example. There's nothing wrong with simple direct sentences such as, I think of my sisters back home. Sometimes an idea is most powerful when it isn't cluttered up with descriptive words. On the other hand, sandstorms are dangerous is a very obvious statement. Either the readers work this out already, or they're kind of beyond hope. Telling people things that they should already know is most likely just to annoy them. This isn't a sentence for Katie to improve, it's a sentence, in my opinion, just to cross out. Lastly, the phrase, will I see them again, in fact the sentence, is fine in its own right, but it feels repetitive because the first paragraph also ended with a question. This could be expressed, for example, as an indirect question. I wonder whether I will, whether I will see them again. It might even be joined to the previous sentence, and wonder whether I will see them again. Put these things together and we have a much better paragraph. Clouds are tightening around the sun. The evening light is dull and rusty. I think of my sisters back home and wonder whether I will see them again. As I've put in the box, good editing usually makes things shorter. If you find yourself editing your work and it gets longer and longer and more and more detailed, then you may be doing something wrong. Here's the next paragraph in Katie's answer. Already my nostrils are clogged with sand. I pull my scarf across my mouth and breathe deeply, but sand races around the sides and into my lungs. I cough painfully. My eyelids are screwed tight, but the rasping wind struggles to drag them open again. This is a really good paragraph. It's full of images that show us how the narrator feels, mixed in with plenty of action. As he pulls the scarf over his mouth, as the sand races, that's a great verb, past it, and as his eyelids fight with the wind. See how much can happen in a piece of writing, even without having a complex plot. The only things that need correcting are a couple of repetitions. Sand and the comma but construction each appear twice. And as I've said here, sometimes you're going to repeat yourself deliberately for a good reason. So for example, you might repeat something to emphasize an important contrast. Uh, and the example I've given here is, once upon a time, I was the richest man in Scotland. Once upon a time, I was the most miserable man in the world. And the repetition of the phrase once upon a time really drags these ideas together and shows what a painful contrast this is for the person we're talking about. Um, however, I've said, if you repeat yourself by accident, this can be very distracting for the reader because their brains are going to search for a reason. They're going to hear the repetition and think, why is there a repetition? But they're not going to find an answer because it was by accident. So you need to avoid this by either choosing an alternative word or by restructuring a sentence. Don't repeat yourself unless it's for a really good reason. The first word, sand, anyway, isn't necessary because the reader's going to know what's blocking the boy's nostrils. By removing this word, Katie could make space to add another sensory detail, for example, by saying that his nose is sore. 
uh, and the first but could become and straight away. So that's a simple solution and here's the corrected paragraph. Already my nostrils are clogged and sore. I pull my scarf across my mouth and breathe deeply and straight away sand races round the sides and into my lungs. I cough painfully. My eyelids are screwed tight but the rasping wind struggles to drag them open again. Now here's Katie's final paragraph. I can hear nothing except the ripping of the strong wind, like a hundred mile canvas being torn from end to end. Although I should be terrified by now, the swaying tread of my camel onward, onward, tells me that everything will be all right. So this is great stuff. Um, we don't need the adjective strong because that's really obvious from ripping. If it wasn't strong, it wouldn't be doing that. Um, and I put a little box here talking about treating adjectives with respect. Um, and I just mentioned that if you saw um, my talk in another group from a couple of weeks ago, um, I spent quite a lot of time talking about adjectives. Uh, and if you want all that again, um, in a lot more detail, uh, have a look at RSL Creative, Creative Writing Book 2, which has got an entire chapter about choosing adjectives really effectively, which adjectives to include, which adjectives to leave out, how adjectives can completely change the meaning of a piece of writing if you use them correctly. Um, but I'll skip this box for the moment. Suffice to say, when you're using adjectives, keep things nice and simple. Okay. Ah, oh, you, uh, you might hear our neighbour doing piano practice just upstairs. The comma after the phrase end to end shows a mistake called comma splicing. This is where you should use a full stop to separate two independent clauses, but you put a comma instead. Um, in, this phrase, in this case, the phrase, although I should be terrified by now, belongs with the camel swaying. The storm ought to be very scary, but the camel calms the boy down. It isn't part of the discussion of the wind's noise. The wind is noisy, although I should be terrified by now, wouldn't really make sense. When one idea ends and another idea begins, and when there's no connecting words such as and, it's usually best to put a full stop. When in doubt, bear in mind that short sentences can be easier to read than long ones anyway. Apart from these things, the paragraph is very effective. It adds to the emotional arc of the piece, uh, that means the way that it follows the character's changing feelings. Because the boy has become increasingly worried in the previous paragraphs, then calms down in this one. The simile, like a hundred mile canvas, creates an awesome impression of the wind's ripping sound, while onward, onward, uses repetition to help us imagine the camel's loping steps, repeated again and again and how the boy's willing it on, as though he's saying, onward, onward, onward. Here's the paragraph again. I can hear nothing except the ripping of the wind, like a hundred mile canvas being torn from end to end. Although I should be terrified by now, the swaying tread of my camel, onward, onward, tells me that everything will be all right. So here is the final improved version of Katie's answer. Um, with all the corrections that I've suggested and put into this new version. Um, I'm not going to read it out loud, but you could pause the video on this screen and have a look at um, what Katie's improved version looks like. Okay, so um, you've got the answer space to do your own thing. Uh, what you absolutely shouldn't do is just do a slightly different version of Katie's answer. This is one example of how you could write a really good response to this question. Uh, the people who do this best are likely to be the people who come up with something that's really very different, people who interpret the photograph in a way that's absolutely their own. So that's what I'd encourage you to do. Um, this talk through has given you an example of some things that can work well. I hope it's given you a really strong example of how you can go through a first draft of your work and edit it to make it much better um, but it certainly isn't a set of specific ideas to go away and copy. I'm looking forward to seeing you do something which I didn't expect that makes me think about this task in a new way. And I'm sure that's what the best answers will do. Um, just quickly to run through the most important rules again, um, your entries must be submitted by midnight on Wednesday the 18th of November. Um, you must post your entries in the comments under this video 
Don't send them to me by any other route. Don't post them anywhere else. They'll only be considered if they go here in the comments. And please, if at all possible, um, have your child, um, or you, I was probably you who's watching this, um, uh, write your answer on the answer sheet that I provided, scan it ideally, or take a really clear photograph if not, and post the scan or the photograph in the comments underneath here. Uh, please don't use any longer than the answer space that I've given. The point of this task is to write something that's really good and really concise, not to write a massive story. Um, that isn't at all what I'm looking for. Um, and of course, uh, this should be your work. It shouldn't be your parents' work. It shouldn't be your older brother or sister's work. Um, but by all means, turn to a dictionary for help with getting your spellings right. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, if you've seen this and you think, I really want more of this kind of material, uh, have a look at the RSL Creative Writing books on Amazon and order your copies. Um, there are links in the description. Of course, if you enter the competition and you win it, uh, you'll be sent um, copies of RSL Creative Writing books one and two for free. Okay, enough, enough waffle from me. Um, happy writing. I really look forward to seeing your answers and I'll be putting together another video with the very best responses in which I explain exactly why they're so good and why they deserve to win. Thanks for your time. Bye.